Hello everybody. Well, I've been asked by so many of you for so many months, if not years, to do a video on how to find the transiting moon in your chart. Because every month, twice a month, I talk about the new moon and the full moon, and many of you say, how on earth do I find it? So I've been thinking about this video for a long time because it's not very easy to explain. However, I'm going to give it my best shot and if you've got questions then just write comments beneath the video and I'll do my best to answer those or if there's enough questions I'll do a follow-up video. I'm going to start out with saying that in astrology we've got different house systems and these different house systems divide up the houses into different numbers of degrees. Now I'm going to start out with the easiest house system, which is not used by that many astrologers. It was the one I learned on uh, very originally when I was 17. It's what, it's what I started out with, is the equal house system. The equal house system is really what it says it is on the tin. It splits every house into the same number of degrees, 30 degrees. Okay, so we've got 12 segments, 12 houses, each of 30 degrees, each. Okay, so each of these segments is 30 degrees in here. This one's 30, they're all 30 degrees. Each one, same number of degrees, okay? With me so far. Now, the challenge can be is that you may have an ascendant, and I'm just taking a random example here. Let's say you are Virgo rising. Let's say you are Virgo with a 15 degree ascendant. 15. So this line here, your ascendant is starting at 15 degrees. So your first house is 15 to 30 degrees of Virgo because there are only 30 degrees of a sign and also the first 15 degrees of Libra is your first house. Have I still got you here? I really could be, should be doing this as a class but I'm trying to do it as a video anyway. So you're starting at 15 degrees. You've got 30 degrees in each house the first 15 degrees of Virgo starts in your 12th house. So here would be the beginning of Virgo for you. Not degrees of Virgo. Then we reach 5, 10, 15 degrees, 20, 25, and we're at the end of Virgo here in the middle of this house. So 15 degrees, and here we've got 15 degrees of Libra and 15 degrees of Scorpio, and so on, all the way round. So, how do you find, let's take a proper example for this month, we've got the full moon lunar eclipse happening at 25 degrees of Libra. So we look here, we go, okay, this person is 15 degrees Virgo rising, equal house system, this starts at 15 degrees here. So, if it's at 25 degrees, that's 20, 25, 30, end of Libra. So 25 degrees of Libra would be here, approximately. So the moon, this full moon lunar eclipse, would be falling in your second house. Let's say it's the solar eclipse, and the solar eclipse is at 8 degrees of Taurus. Now remember, we've got 15 degrees Aries, 15 degrees Taurus here. So where is 8 degrees Taurus going to be? I would be asking my class now. And hopefully you'd be putting your hand up and saying, well, it's back, it's in the 8th house. Because here we've got North Taurus. We go 20, 25 of Aries, 20, 25 and to the end of Aries, not Taurus, 5, 10, so 6, 7, 8, 9, 8 degrees of Taurus would be where we would have the solar eclipse. 
So that will be the eighth house. I hope that makes sense because I'm coming on to something a little more complicated after this now. So this is the equal house system where everything is equal. Each, each degree of the house is the same degree. And now on to part two of this video, which is showing you the Placidus system, which is used by about 80-85% of astrologers. In my experience, I find it to be the most accurate, particularly for the transits and the progressions. So, let me show you now, I hope I haven't confused you so far, I hope you're finding it a breeze, now let me show you how the, what is called an unequal house system. The two main known ones are the Placidus and the Koch, which are unequal. What does it mean by unequal? Well, as you saw in the previous video, each, each house had the same size. These houses now have got different sizes. As you can see, there's a big one, there's a, a bigger one, a teeny one, a small, they're, they're all different sizes. So what this means is that um, you no longer have um, 30 degrees for a house. You may have some that are less than 30 degrees and some that span nearly 60 degrees. So, let me try and break this down. The same thing, it's still a circle and there's still 360 degrees in the circle. The difference is that you need to keep in mind that there are only 30 degrees of each sign. So Virgo is here, 30 degrees of Virgo. I'm using our same example of a 15 degree Virgo ascendant, by the way. Here we've got Libra, 30 degrees of Libra. That doesn't change. So we've only ever got 30 degrees of the signs. Those, those can never change. But what's changing is the size of the house. Now, if the house changes, that means, of course, you can have up to three different signs in the same house. Trying not to confuse you here, trying to keep it simple. Let's use our example again with this 15 degree Virgo ascendant, just as an example, because it's in the middle of Virgo. So, Virgo here, you can see 15 degrees, 20, 25, 30, that's the end of Virgo, see? End of Virgo here. We start Libra here, 5 degrees, oh look, 10 degrees of Libra starts this next second house. 10 degrees of Libra, not 15, as it would have been in the equal house. So the second house starts at 10 degrees of Libra in this particular chart. And look, the whole of Scorpio is still in that second house. Yes, this is all Scorpio from here to here. And we're now starting with Sagittarius. One, two, three, four, five degrees of Sagittarius starts the third house. So we have what is known in here as an intercepted house. There's a lot to talk about, a lot to teach, but just to say that plot bang in the middle is Scorpio. The house begins with Libra, 10 degrees of Libra, and it ends at 5 degrees of Sagittarius. So in this house you've got everything from 10 Libra onwards, so 10 Libra to the end of Libra, from 1 to 29 of Scorpio, and 1 to 5 of um, Sagittarius. So therefore, taking our current example, this Full moon lunar eclipse happening on the 15th of April at 25 degrees of Libra is here. 25 Libra, 10, 15, what am I doing? 10, 15, 20, 25 Libra. This is where that full moon lunar eclipse would fall. The issue with these, this Placidus is we've got different starting and ending points for the houses. Here's another one, another interesting one. So we've begun at five degrees of Sagittarius for our third house. <clears throat> the fourth house.
house is beginning at 10, that's 5 degrees here, 10, 15, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28 and 29 degrees. 29 degrees of Sagittarius begins our fourth house, right here, where the line goes up and here we come out on the other side at 29 degrees of Gemini right at the end of Gemini. That begins equally, so if it's the fourth house, it's going to be the opposite house will be the tenth. The opposite houses will have the same degree, of course, 15 degrees Virgo on the ascendant here will give us 15 degrees of Pisces on the descendant. This is the descendant, this is what rises on the eastern horizon when you're born, and this is what is setting on the eastern horizon when you were born. So, the second eclipse, the solar eclipse, okay, all hands up now at 8 degrees of Taurus. Which house is it in? Taurus is here. The 8th house, let's calculate that. So this house is beginning at 10 degrees, we have 10 degrees of Libra here. So for this <coughs> Second house, so this eighth house will begin at 10 degrees of Aries, the opposite. 10, 15, 20, 25, end of Aries. See, we're at the end of Aries. Now we're into Taurus. And at eight degrees of Taurus, five, six, seven, eight. Here, eight degrees of Taurus whew, will be that new moon solar eclipse. I hope that's given you some starting points. It's possibly raised more questions than answers, but I'm hoping it's given some of you some of those answers. Let me know how you're getting on with it. If I need to break it down into smaller bite-sized pieces, please let me know. When I'm in an astrology class, of course, I'm having interactions. Let's do our interactions by comments and I will try and respond, as I say, either through comments or I'll do another follow-up video. Thanks for listening and I hope you can find now the transiting moon in your chart, whether you're using the equal house system or Placidus. Bye for now.